So in okay. theory. How did you find last night's show anyway? Uh, really interesting. I, th I think um, Dominic was running. I think somebody put in the comments that Dominic's brain is running at three percent. The rest of LDL running at one hundred percent, and it definitely <laughs> felt like that for some parts. It was really interesting. I mean, I, I love Dominic. You know, the reason the modern hobby exists is because he created the first F three base board that then promptly got ripped off, uh, oh, and he never no. made any money out of it. But you know, the modern hobby with all of the coolness, with the you know the descendants of clean flight, with the effort he put in there plowing the road with the first f3 board uh we we owe him a lot actually and he's kind of a bit of a forgotten hero in the hobby so it was lovely to see him on your show uh but the thing is with dominic is he operates such a clever guy his brain operates at this kind of stratospheric level um and uh I, I know the fun that i used to have talking to him you know i'd be trying to explain something in clean flight something for one of my videos and he talked to me for 45 minutes and he'd kind of explain it. And at the end of it, my kind of eyes were bleeding. And then I had to go away, you know, have a lie down with a damp towel on my forehead and then go, right, how am I going to explain that in 12 minutes so that 90% of the people watching it understand what I've just said? And that was the fun with Dominic. He's taking all this fantastic information he has and, and kind of resolving it down to something that everyone can understand. And I think it, it was fun watching that last night with you guys. It was, uh, it was kind of good. I wish... He was doing more in the hobby. Um, yeah, he, he's still got some great ideas. You know, he, I kind of loaded a question in in the the LDO show last night about the color on screen display. Uh, he was working on some amazing OSD technology that just went nowhere. Uh, he kind of showed you a bit on the desk. You know, he had one of them hooked up. You know, sixty frame per second vector based on screen displays. He actually had a way to multiplex the pixels so they actually uh, took on color. He was doing some amazing stuff, and we've got none of that because, um, you know, some of the the way that open source technology works can be heartbreaking for some uh, for some developers, and we lose a lot of really good ideas because of the silly silly bullying that goes on. Um, you know, and the the kind of willy measuring that happens sometimes in those in those projects, and it's a shame because, you know, I I would love to have different options about, and hopefully Dominic will get involved in one of those projects and will get some of the benefit of his brain. I know, which is I a very warm way of saying I loved it. It was really good. Thank you. Yeah, he um he 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 referred to it as like gatekeeping, basically. Um, that's what he said. There's there's definite gatekeepers. And uh, it's, it's a real, real shame. But I, I thoroughly always enjoy having him on. Um, it, it's, right. it's, a, it's a shame that we, we have the gatekeeping in the hobby because part of the reason that we have the hobby as it is today is because it was a bit of a free-for-all that anyone with a great idea could rock up. And if it was a good enough idea that enough people wanted to do, people would do it. And it's mm. it, people defending their own little fiefdom uh, is not great for the hobby, really. And that's, you know... It's just it, a good idea is a good idea. It doesn't matter where it came from. Yeah. Anyway, go on. You're about to do the intro, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No worries. Um, hello, and welcome to uh, Bright Until I Fly's channel, my my humble little channel. And um, I've got a, a very, uh, I'm a very pleased to say I've got a very special guest, and he's a very close friend of mine. It's um, the guy who's probably solved more problems than NASA. Uh, <laughs> regards getting something to fly, uh, painless 360. Hello, Jack. Uh, How you doing? How you doing, mate? I'm all right. I'm, I'm, uh, the health's not amazing, but I'm all right. I'm very pleased to have you here and, and to be chatting and a bit of one to one stuff. And it's, it's uh, thank you. No, thank you for inviting me because I've watched a few of the other shows. Um, I'm going to post the link to this on my community tab, and but you. I watched the one you did with Pavel. I think it was the last one you did. Uh, Pavel Skowski um, is second to last. Okay, was that? Oh, it I was had... Adam Juniper last time, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I, it's been really fun kind of listening in uh, to some of these other guys. Obviously, I'm, I'm mates with Pavel as well. Um uh, so thank you for the shout out on that one to me. God bless you. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But 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 it's but it's fun because it's it's a different conversation, right? So when me and Pavel are talking, we're talking about iNav stuff and videos and content and, you know, playing around with the the, the new LoRa-based 2.4 gig radios and what we're both finding. And you, you kind of get siloed into these little things. It was kind of fun to watch an interview with somebody else asking some other questions because you I found mm. out loads of stuff about Pavel I didn't know. And I, you know, I'm mates with him because you asked uh, Yeah. Me. I know. It's really weird because um, 
like I I I started, you know, with with my current job as well. I I do a lot of like lead finding and um and especially being friends with someone like Andrew slash Frank, which is also another budding friendship from me, <laughs> where where I feel slightly left out. But I do like that the fact that the machine made by Frank is next to the machine made by by Painless. If you see there, the little box there is yours. I didn't have the heart to say, I take it out of the box and show people, and it's still got the post-it note on. But them two there are like, you know, you two now. Um so, uh, so, so just just if you're listening to this on audio, just to explain. So, so Jack you, you won't. A, it'll only live here. Right. Cool. You okay. Don't so, have to do that. So, for those of you who don't know what a machine is, go and look at the logo for Jack's channel, and it's this kind of cat-shaped blob. And Jack's version is wearing FPV goggles. Surprise, surprise, and holding the radio. Now, I didn't know that the. I just thought Jack had created this thing on his own, and I just happened to be looking through. I'm at. Um, oh, you can't really see on my, but I've got quite a few of those um, pops, things like Tron ones and stuff on mine. Anyway, I was looking through the latest ones and there was this thing. And I thought, oh my God, that's where Jack's logo come from. But of course, it, the normal machine doesn't have the FPV goggles and the radio. So at the time I was actually doing stuff uh, with modeling clay and some of the, I do other stuff about radio control. So I thought, right, I'll get a machine. So I got one in, I made the goggles, I made the little radio. So it's like a special edition and then uh, shipped it off to off to you. Um, and I remember when you got it, because the I think the, was it the radio was hidden at the bottom so you couldn't see it? Because you hadn't even mm. taken it out of the box when you called me and went, oh, wow, you made my logo. Yeah. And I was like, yeah. unpack it. And he was like, oh, there's a radio as well. So, uh, yeah, and then and then turns out that Frank's already done it for you. So, uh, we see, that's yeah, the well, cool thing of having a fab logo, mate, that, you know, people people are inspired to make it in 3D for you. I, I know. Have, I, I have just, a pill. I, yeah, I, I, well, is, is it from Akira? The pushing um, the, the no. no, the pill. Like, it's very Akira-like. Ah, okay, I've well... I've always wanted the, to ask you about that. So the, the the okay, the the short version because we're only on here for an hour, right? Is yeah. that uh, yeah? It's from Akira. So um, hang on, I'm going to move. People my won't know what. It, oh yeah, right. Okay, uh, so hang on, I've got a little exclusive as well, Lee. Hang on, oh, look I'm at trying... that. <gasps> New stickers. Yes. Yes. Right. So <laughs> so so there. Hopefully you can see that's uh, Canada and his or Canada and his bike yes. on the back of his jacket. You're absolutely oh, oh hang on now. Put oh, it back sorry, now. bear with me. This is really difficult. So I'm trying to point while looking in. The, <laughs> oh my gosh! Okay, just that red bike there, just near my finger, or just above the slave one. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so on the back he's got a pill. And uh, and I always like Akira when I first saw it. I was blown away. I'm, I'm a, a big anime fan. Um, I'd never seen anything like it. Again, that was one that kind of at the end my my eyes were bleeding. But anyway, then then I started to play first person shooters, Halo, back on the Xbox. One of the logos that you could have on your Spartan armor was a pill. So I thought, hey, I'll be like, you know, I'll be like Canada. I'll have the pill. So when I needed a logo for Painless 360. Um, just seemed like a natural thing to choose the pill. And then as someone was saying the other day, you know, Oh, all right. So you're a YouTuber. Uh, I was like, yeah, yeah. Like, What's your channel name? Painless 360. What? Painless 360. What? I was yeah. like, pay the word painless. Right. Number three. Right. Number six, number zero. Right. What's that stand for? I was like, look, mate, don't get, I'm not going there. It's one of those mm. things. If I'd have known this was going to be a, such a big part of what I do, um, yeah. I'd have chosen a much better name. Painless 360 just, just happened to be the only Xbox Live ID I could get my hands on back when I signed up 13, 14 years ago to Xbox Live for the first time. So oh it's God. all it's all a bit it's all a bit weird. There was no plan to be a radio control channel. That wasn't the gig. It was just making video so i could show people how you set things like the uh, the gear mesh on things like a 450 class helicopter mm. that's, that's how it all started out making the odd video and here we are 1300 odd videos later i'm so glad i didn't use my xbox live um name because it's vicious spanker 
<laughs> <He's>... <laughs> I, you know what, Vicious Spank FPV. It, I think it's got legs. Kind, I think it, kind of. I'd work. love to see what the yeah what the logo for that one would be. I know. Oh man. Um, I like maybe if Pasheen ever like sues me for copyright, <laughs> <laughs> I might have to do that. Well, um, maybe when you're a massive channel, mate, and you and you know, and, and, yeah. and uh, maybe, maybe well, I, th- I think you'll be all right for a bit yet. No, let's see, yeah. let's see if we can get you over a thousand subscribers. I if hope wa- so. Yeah. By the way, if you're watching this and you haven't hit the like and subscribe button, I know Jack would probably say this anyway, but I'm going to say it right because. I've made a lot of videos and I say it a lot is do hit the like and subscribe button. Um, cause it, it, it does make a big difference. I think your channel's at 900 odd at the moment. Is it? Yeah. 924, 924. I'm looking at right now, right? We only need seven. Is that right? 76 more people. And then, it, uh, and then you go over a thousand. I don't know if you, if you're not a YouTuber, you don't know this, but um, if you're under a thousand, um, your channel is the kind of thing that YouTube blows its nose on. It just has no value as far as YouTube is concerned. You don't get any benefits. You don't get to monetize your video. You don't get things like the community tab. It's crap. Um, it would be great if, uh, yeah, let's see if we can get you over a thousand, brother, and then you can have all that yeah. stuff. Because I would yeah, love but... to see more, more videos like this. Well, not with me on, but you know, people who know what they're talking about. Yeah, because I remember at, the, at Christmas back in like 2017 or whatever or 18, and uh, my my YouTube channel was monetized, and I was running, the, uh, I was running most of the LDO shows, and we had the bonus one. Do you remember Boris B chatting to Boris B? And uh, yeah, me and Boris the... B were on at the same time. I remember that. I know. Um, have you heard much from him? Or I haven't. I. I... <sighs> Boris leaving or not being involved in the Beta Flight project was where I started to get a little bit sad. Um, I, I love Boris. I thought he had a very pure way of going about it. You know, he forked Clean Flight. That's forked, everybody, uh, to to create Beta Flight to play around with lock, getting the, the settings locked in. Um, and th- But these things go through waves, don't they? Uh, I, I, again, Boris is another one of the guys that I hope has more to do with the hobby because, again, he's a very, very smart bloke. But no, I haven't heard from him for ages, mate. But that was—I enjoyed being on that show. It was great. It was got a, we got a chance to ask him all the really wacky questions about beta flight, which back mm. then was the exotic option to clean flight. Do you remember that? People yeah, flew clean I know. flight, and if you were wacky, you, you flew this thing called beta flight, and everyone was going, "Oh, but the clues in the name—it's beta. It's a test bed," which is what he envisaged it as. The idea was that once all that code was sorted, it was going to be pushed back up into you know the mothership yeah. of clean flight um and yeah here here we are you know the the default install these days for the vast majority is good old beta flight maybe we need a alpha flight <laughs> yeah that's yeah that's yeah the the yeah uh, well no you need omega flight a mega flight oh okay yeah, like yeah. where everything gets ported to it as an official release but it it was really it was so weird. like we were just coming like to give you an idea of the time frame, we were just we were getting over BL Heli and 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 obviously Painless was like full on like this is how you flash things and this is how you configure things and you know don't set your motor timing t- too high or or whatever and then the next thing it was like you know you, we were just lurking in RC groups and you'd hear little rumbles of you know like hear hear you know like there's this thing called beta flight and you have to be part of you know, hilariously, what you say, the inner circle. <laughs> you did. You had to. Yeah, you actually and had, you, to you have got, you had to get access. invited. Yeah. yeah. And then and then you get your mate who had access to it to give you a copy and you try it out. And it was, uh, yeah, it, it was like you had to, I don't know, roll up your trouser legs and have a special handshake to get it. It was wacky. Um, yeah. Yeah, I remember those days, yeah. And this thing called iNav, which nobody was going to touch with the bloody barge pole because they were doing GPS stuff. Right. <sighs> I, well, I still remember watching your video on um, on 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 the multi we uh, you know return to home, and it's a bit what I can't <laughs> believe how well that worked. I was like, it was brilliant. It was eight bit and it was rock solid. And when they ported it over, and interestingly, was it? It broke. It, um, yeah, actually, it was something that um, again, if you're watching this and you haven't watched the LDO show from the night of the. 3rd of September. Go and have a look at that because Dominic Clifton's on. Dominic Clifton, the father of Clean Flight, all hail Hydra. Uh, he 
he uh, was talking about this. But what they did is they took the 8-bit code from the Arduino-based processor and put it on an F1 32-bit processor. But most of the code was still 8-bit. It was just kind of melged, technical term, mm. uh, to, to work in 32-bit. But the only thing that they didn't fix was the GPS stuff. And it was one of the best bloody things about MultiWii. Because MultiWii, actually, was that, was pretty good. I mean, it's the reason why it's the base that, you know, all the modern Kiss. control software... Kiss. Kiss. Uh, you know, everybody nicked from it. It's, it was great. Um, mm. It's just, yeah, the GPS stuff, when they ported it, they kind of went, yeah, nobody's going to bother with that. <laughs> yeah, they didn't... Yeah, they, they didn't really have the sort of like desire i think it kind of broke because um it's to, i think from my understanding it's all to do with like the integer and um float it, uh, yes yeah, it's how it's how the stuff is calculated and that changed yeah. fundamentally between the two platforms um and, and to be and to be fair the gps stuff needed a complete rewrite anyway when the inav guys took it because uh, I was involved with the iNav stuff really early on. I was I was talking to Dominic, and Dominic was I was saying, "What's this iNav?" And he was going, "No, oh, it's this these cra these crazy Russians <laughs> going off and doing some GPS." And I was like, "All right," because the GPS stuff, I'd love to see that back because the multi wee stuff kiss you know kicked yeah. ass. Um, and then spoke to the crazy Russians, Constantine, and then uh, got introduced to Pavel and those guys. Um, and then when I spoke to them and said, "You know, is this?" GPS stuff and that you've got fixed now, porting back. And they went, we can't. And they went, what do you mean they can't? I said, we've changed so much of the code to get it to work because there's so many interdependencies. It's not just like yeah. one module and you, and you kind of just go, and you take that over and stick it in. There's, there's, it's, it's, it's full of different stuff. It won't come back. And that was the point where I thought, oh, crap. We're going to end up with a, you know, a, a raspberry ripple version of it, a chocolate, a caramel version, you know, a vanilla version. We're going to have all these different versions of flight control software, where yeah, you know, know, back in the day, it was it was clean flight, or you went exotic, or kiss, or yeah. something wacky. Well, it's like the the main the you know the main guy who wrote a lot of multi -Wii, a lot. I think a lot of that code went back into KISS and people like you and me who flew the multi Wii and had the had the feel from the KK two board mm -hmm. uh to the multi Wii, you know, like especially like, you know, me I remember me, you and David Rinderstall chatting and we were like, Oh my God, I can't believe how smooth it is. And the yaw was like beautiful. And Straight. yeah. But but you didn't have to tune it, right? You didn't you didn't yeah. spend you didn't have to play with TPAs, PIDs, any of that crap. You just you just plugged it in, you took off, and it just went whoop yeah. and flew. And it was like, okay, this is black magic. This is awesome. And the, the KISS stuff, I remember, was the very first time. I mean, we're going back quite a few years now for those in the chat. So you might you may or may not remember. But, but it used to be, you know, when you landed your quad, it used to do that bounce thing as it kind of came down its own wash. First KISS model I made, I came into land, it just went ooh. Mm. And I was like, I've never seen that. It just handled it so nicely. It was it was amazing. And I do think that this is part of the problem, you know, going back, um, it, it is that the dev a lot of the development that's going on for the software that we use, uh, and, and, you know, I'm kind of including OpenTX and those kind of things as well, is that there's a load of very, very clever guys with brains, you know, the size of planets who are creating the code. But the, the difference between that and the commercial product is there's nobody sat in front of those guys with amazing brains, um, help, you know, writing manuals and doing all that stuff, and, and making the user experience as simple as is humanly possible. It's the reason why things like my channel exist, right? If, if they did that, then I could just pack up and, you know, just go out and fly all day. Because, mm -hmm. because the, the, the challenge is, is that, you know, setting up things, in fact, I was talking to, Chris at Armatan, Armatan Quads. Um, so, so Chris has what his ready to flies haven't been coming out with the later versions of Beta Flight because, as far as Chris is concerned, and Chris knows what he's doing when he's tuning. You know, he's been doing it a long time. Chris is a really good quad builder. Um, he couldn't get it to fly as well 
you know, we always joke about, you know, 3.5 beta flight was one of the best flying beta flights ever, right? And everything else has mm. just been a disaster until four two. And we were having this chat, and he basically has kind of locked off the builds for beta flight on the ready to fly stuff to that all the stuff. And we were having this big chat, and I was saying, have you tried 4.2? And he's like, no, mate, I just, I'm not, I said, G give it a go. It seems an awful lot better. But, but the whole thing about it getting either not working or being as easy to tune or having to put so much energy in to get it to fly as well as older versions, that feels to me like a retrograde step. So surely mm. that, that, you know, for a project, it should, when you, when you increase the complexity, there should be some thought about also adding in um, a, a, and abstracting that complexity for the end user. You think about all the people who are building quads now. We watch, you know, my bloody multi wee video or whatever, and they're trying to do it. And you know, I get questions about them all, all the time. Just completely. Well, multi -wee. <laughs> no, yeah, seriously. So I get loads on multi wee I get loads on CC3D. I get loads on APM. I'm not joking. Right. I get, right, all the really old boards. And do you know why? Is because one of the biggest places in the world at the moment that's exploding with, is India. Absolutely. But they can't get all the latest technology so they're making it out whatever they can get their hands on but it but but it, and it's amazing it's like what it was the hobby was like here five years ago where we were using things like balsa wood right and gaffer tape right to make frames mm. you remember those days it was ace if you broke something you just went down to b and q and bought some a little bit more wood um it, they're at that kind of level um, so, no, I get loads of questions about that. The problem is, is that I can't really answer them because I haven't touched a CC3D or a multi wee or a, an APM for probably three, four years. So I have to say, sorry, mate, all I knew was in the video. But um, but that but that complexity, uh, those extra cool things that they're all adding, you know, the, the, the extra knobs and switches, it's becoming like the cockpit of the space shuttle. And it's like, no, 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 no. We don't need just for ninety percent of the pilots out there don't need to see all those switch. Just just give me the five switches that I need to make mm -hmm. it fly. And and you know, OpenTX is just as bad. OpenTX is, mm -hmm. you know, me. I've made hundreds of video on that bloody stuff, and I think it's amazing. But I know if your brain isn't built to be tech to to think in those kind of technical terms. OPCX is completely overwhelming. If you come from a Spectrum radio that's got like five screens on it and you come into OpenTX and you've got seven or eight screens for the radio, you've got 13 per model. Um, you just, yeah, right? You try and set a new model up and the wizard kind of half, half works. No, you know, even well, well, well the, the wizard I went through the other day and it now asks you in the quad thing like what's your arm switch what's your mode switch have you seen it lately okay so so it is in so is that the, you? I, okay so i luckily i'm finally now talking to the OpenTX developers and i've been i've been they flipping ain't me i'm sure they ain't me now so i was like <laughs> right can we just fix because this is shit this is shit. right so they're, they're like, okay let's get so um in my humble opinion, there should be a skin that you are, which is a Lua script that you can run that abstracts all of the OpenTX complexity and makes it feel like a Spectrum radio. For those people who don't want to see all the knobs and switches, just hide them away. Just, you know, ask, is it a, because things like the multi rotor, you should have an arming switch and you should have a mode switch as well as you, uh, as, as well as your controls, right? It, it should be that easy. Um, but also, they have uh, been working with them. I don't know if you saw, I did a video a while ago setting up a fly barless heli in OpenTX. Yes, yes, oh, I did. Right. So, yeah, apologies for that. So that so that video uh, was something that loads of people have asked for. I've eventually got a little fly barless heli, a E160 thing, which is flipping awesome, and uh, set it up and literally went into probably every single screen on the radio in order to set it up with different you know, pitch and all kinds of stuff, right? Anyway, the OpenTX devs went, that's brilliant. Let's set up a wizard for helis because now you've shown us how you set a heli, uh, a fly barless heli setup. I was like, brilliant, let's do it. Because, you know, because a fly barless unit is a fly barless unit. So we can we can make a generic one, right? And they were like, no, 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 no. We're not doing that. We'll make one for the E160. Hello, Frank. And I yep. was like, well, what, why? Okay, that's better than nothing, I suppose. But why don't, why don't you just... Get the people to download the model that i've shared 
<laughs> See, that's the other cool thing, right? Well, why don't we have a repository from uh, of of model types with kind of you know where you plug the servos in for popular models like the Bixler and things like that, along mm. with OpenTX models? That'd be awesome if you include the little icon, you know, that you put in your mm. radio. So when you choose it's it, literally you have a, a bin picture. file. It's tiny. Imagine how awesome that would be. And but but anyway, these are just examples of why a lot of the projects where highly technical people with brains the size of planets create amazing technology there's nobody at the front in kind of the marketing or customer experience side which sounds like really fluffy jobs uh, but actually they're not who kind of go and say well that's great but uh, out of the 367 options that are now available to our customers <laughs> Which yeah. are the which are the ten that we need, and let's let's give them those first, and then the other stuff is optional. No one's doing that because they just expect you to know it. And there's so many people who come along and watch my UpTX videos who you can almost hear them, the t you know the tears rolling down. There as I'm as like, I just want to program for a quadcopter. As they're typing away, I can, the thing is, I, I have know. to do that off the screen. And it's like, well, like, like, it's not that hard, but but actually, you have to watch six videos to do it. Yeah, and and that, that's the thing. You can download a standard uh, bitmap image of a Bixler on the OpenTX, but then you can't find a a, a, a setup with a chat yeah. bin <laughs> file that's smaller. Yeah, I mean, for 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 things that you have to build, oh. where you have to, you know, you, you can you can you know daft things like this. Look, I had props. But have things like this that have different motors and stuff on. This is this is an exotic thing, and you have to know what you're doing to set it up properly, right? But things like a Bixler, things like an AXN, things like a ZOHD Orbit or a ZOHD um, uh, Dart. Yeah, and what's the what's the one that uh, just uh, uh, drift? Oh yeah, drift, that that, that new one that's amazing. Um, those those come with a with it's a known quantity, right? So you know how much the controls need to move, you know all that stuff. Literally, the only thing you have to do is just trim the aircraft so the controls are in the right position before you lock the thing. But you, but anyway. So yeah, for me, yeah, it's I just wish that some of these projects would uh, spend a bit of time thinking about the user experience and supporting existing and new users coming into their technology, and not just give us another twenty switches. Um, because I think we'd, we'd actually get more out of the technology by understanding that. You know, I used to love uh, Josh Bardwell when he first started. Used to do those amazing tuning videos. Do you remember them? Yeah. Used to used to used to get the black box, right? And I would I would watch them rel religiously, and he'd go, "Okay, so here's the and you can see the P's over convex, so the P's too high, and he'd go through everything." Overshoot. Yeah, and 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 it would just be like. Oh, this, and then he go, okay, so the filter's too high because we're not seeing, we're not getting enough resolution and blah, blah, blah. Awesome. Kick ass. Why is nobody doing that anymore? Because actually that kind of stuff is, you know, tuning is, is, is still a black art. Um, mm. Why, why is it still a black art? Most of us have kind of figured out the way that we do it and we kind of still do it the same way. Every version of beta flight or INAV or RD plane or whatever. You have the auto cheat stuff these days, but you know, the process that we use, you know, the bit where you kind of, you increase the P gain until it does that. And then mm, you kind of turn it down it until it does that. And then you increase your D. Gain. All that stuff um, is the way we do it. Now, is that the right way for the latest version of beta flight? I don't know, mm. but you know what? We, that, it, that's probably the way I'm going to do it. Yeah. We almost need to all get together and like, you know, the people who are mainly into tuning stuff and have an argument about, how everyone does it and find like out the simple ways because i i once tuned a like a kiss quad winter blue i i resent that remark and um i i tuned it to the point where if he put a nick in a prop you could you could feel the you difference feel yeah and uh that was my greatest tune like red you know the red bottom motors but with the white yeah. sport writing 24 amp ESC's KISS V1 on a QAV. But there's a lot of, I think KISS made the sort of like bad habit of people being able to upload their PIDs and, you know, like the sort of Andy RC giving out PIDs as well. Yeah, the, the whole thing about what's your PIDs, mate, I think is horrendously dangerous because you've just illustrated the point that, you know, with your highly tuned model, you could feel when you bent a prop because it just wouldn't yeah. behave properly. And I think, that, you know, and, and, you know, the biggest thing that I've come across is the rates. 
Um, and actually, actually, I was talking to a manufacturer about this, and I, um, uh, they were and they were they were talking to me about how they can add value and you know how could they can give their uh, extra stuff. And I said, could you just show us what your race pilots do with their tunes? Not necessarily to down, but I, I'm just interested. What version of Beat Fight they're running? What does the tune look like? Mm. I, I just want to compare it with mine because occasionally you watch a video, um, you know. People make videos apparently on radio control, and you'll watch a video and, and you'll do something, and, and you'll kind of, you'll, you know, I've had those moments where I've had to pause it and kind of rewind it 10 seconds and play it again and just go, just say that again. And then when you hear it again, you go, oh my God. And it's a revelation and it's part of, you know, like the, the rates. Um, mm. But but the thing is for rates is that for 60, 70, 80% of pilots, they're not going to do the full flippy floppy shooting through the trees, dropping down disused chimneys. You know, they're not doing any of that stuff. They just want a quad that feels really good. Um, and for those, the rates, you know, the tune's probably going to be almost the same, but the rates will be slightly tuned, turned down, uh, maybe a bit more expo. And then those rates are going to be the basis for you, the pilot who knows what he's doing to, to kind of push it out a little bit. And I think, again, mm -hmm. vendors should be giving us the PIDs um, in fact, I don't know if you noticed, I've started, um, it sounds really rude this, I've started doing dump and diff stuff. Whenever I do a review of a quad as part of my beta flight, because I always go through the beta flight setup. And the reason I do is because I used to, I always get questions about, uh, I've, I've, I've just upgraded um, beta flight and it was crap. So I'm going back to 317. Uh, what was the, you know, what was the LPS filter setting or whatever? And I'm like, mate, I have no idea. You know, I... Right, I, I did the review, and that's one I've given away or whatever. Um, so now I'm dumping and diffing the beta flight stuff so that you can have a look. But I think that vendors, when they sell ready to flies in particular, should give us the uh, you know the the tune for kind of beginner, intermediate, advanced pilot. Let's face it, most advanced will probably just do their own thing anyway. And then when beta flight is upgraded, give us the new version of it and any little tweaks. Because sometimes mm. you might have to change things like your motor timing in BL Heli. You know that can sometimes when you when you're pushing uh, a, ch a high tune, you know you might have to change your motor timing a little bit. Um, you know, have those kind of things. A lot of vent uh, it does feel at the moment like a lot of vendors just bring out stuff and they you get it, and then they kind of go right. What we do next? And it's kind of no 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 no. The tell you know to support the community and kind of and pass this around. And you know if you do have pilots out there that are um that know what they're doing share their setups because mm. again you know i might i might be looking at that and go why the hell have they turned that down and then go and look online and, and do some reading and then realize oh, i didn't know you could do that in that version yeah. um, and you know and, and i learned something yeah because they, they make a lot of um they make a lot of tweets for like changing the scale of things so like a number that was relevant once upon a time they, they realized that you know we can eke more out or you know they desensitize something so that you put in a new value and it won't affect it as much so that you've got like a more of a resolution to fine tune should yeah. we say and I, um i've just, just seen a, a comment from magical pencil he said i sorted out my success okay. build the other week with black box frequency analyzer and one filter change and that's turned his motors uh from being warm into stone cold all the time and it's it's things like that um that those little tricks that i don't think enough uh, content's been made around really because it might be mm. you know for, for me would i start looking at filters as step one no i probably wouldn't i'd probably think my d's are too high if my motors mm. are getting hot you know that's where i'd start um but but it, yeah there's those kind of uh, cute things i just yeah if anyone's listening from any of the projects please just get someone who knows nothing about the project to try and figure out what you're trying to do and write a manual for it or some how to's for the rest of us um because as somebody has just said uh, mr fruity cakes a lot of vendors rely on you chaps for the tune i think a lot of vendors rely on this community uh, for a lot of stuff and a lot of that is including support and explaining their products properly um mm. particularly the ones from china you know you very rarely get a manual that's worth anything i mean even back in the days when i got spectrum kit my first rate first proper radio was a spectrum radio and i read it cover to cover 
right? Because it was a big investment back then. You know, it's like 300 quid. And this is when 300 quid, you know, was a lot of money. Dinosaur, dinosaurs were all moving in the earth and everything, right? But I read the manual, got to the end of it, still was none the wiser because it talked about dual rates, talked about setup expo, talked about setting up throttle cut, talked about aileron elevator throttle roll, talked about rudder pitch, all these kind of different interoperable terms. Didn't explain to me what dual rates was. Didn't explain to me what all expo was. So I got to the end of it and I kind of I kind of knew how to set this stuff up. But I didn't have a clue what it what it did. And that's a classic example. I think they're better now, but it's a classic example of, you know, that the we need to we need to lower the bar. And I think vendors need to do a little bit more rather than just kick it out and expect people like, you know, me, Josh Bardwell, uh, people like NJ, Andy RC, all the other reviewers to kind of show people how to do it, because they kind of rely on that now. Um, and I don't think that's the way to do it. I think I think a lot of stuff, my personal opinion, a lot of stuff is lost and buried. And the way I mean that was that, like, do you remember a company called Red Cat who, like, bought a lot of Riot? They yeah. were harvesting, um, they were harvesting, uh, you know, users' data and crash data from people's black boxes. But like you were saying, with the 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 black box is i think we could probably learn uh not black box with a cli dump i think we could learn a lot if um we had catalogs of all the the changes we made and like things that we done so you're you're able to look back and like you know what was added and doing a lot of comparing and stuff and like you were saying about dual rates and expo is a lot of that sort of stuff that i i've been digging through old flight test stuff and a lot of that stuff was beautifully beautifully oh, um, it was in the covered, early days. sponsored by hobby king where they had the different servers they had a digital servo and an analog servo and you got to see the analog jitter and you got to see the overshoot and you got to see the dual rates and yeah, like it's you know the that that sort of you with a video with a analog um, example like that would be, but we're a slave to YouTube, unfortunately, where those videos are old and YouTube's algorithms now th forcing new stuff. So I think you're gonna have to start repeating. Well, I, I, I interestingly say that I did the first six weeks of lockdown. Uh, were brilliant. A lot of people would, you know, uh, content creators were running around doing live streams just to keep up the content. Um, and I was like, this is brilliant because the, the stuff that comes in from China for review uh, stopped uh, because, of course, it already stopped because of the Chinese New Year. So I didn't have anything I had to review and I had a whole bloody list of stuff that I wanted to make videos for. Some of it was new stuff. Some of it was for stuff absolutely, as you're saying, that uh, was still valuable, because, but because it was six years old, it never, unless you were in the RC Groups forum, you know, on that first three pages where it got mentioned, uh, you'd never find it. So if you were searching for, I don't know, um, you know, uh, ESC servo or whatever, you're trying to figure out how much current a servo pulls. You're not going to find my video from six years ago. So I, st I, I, I redid that six weeks was immense. And those who watch my channel probably noticed there was all this stuff started coming out, which was the, the stuff that, cause also people like uh, Bruce X jet, you know, Bruce with his whiteboard, brilliant at kind of just explaining stuff, right? Just kind of drawing it out. So you're almost like sat in a lecture and, and for an awful lot of people, um, and I don't know whether this is a generational thing, um, but for an awful lot of people that, uh, I don't know whether it's a time, they don't want to read through the 37, 47 pages of the RC Groups thread. And I wouldn't recommend that anyway, because as soon as somebody gives you the right answer, the next post will be, well, that's crap, that's wrong. Don't do it that way, do it the other way. Um, but, it, but if you go and read the manual, you usually find the kind of stuff that's going on anyway. But but a lot of people want to kind of Google the question, find a video, watch it, have the answer in three minutes and be back in the bench doing that little mod or whatever it needs to be and be fixed. Um, Count your and, wins. Yeah, absolutely. And 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 the, the challenge that I get sometimes with the YouTube channel is that, you know, and occasionally get people going, oh, why don't you just get to the point? When, you know, in the comments, and you kind of go, yeah, but the problem is, is that the thing that you want to fix, 
is part of a system. <laughs> and if you just change that one thing and you're not cognizant of all the other things that it's part of, uh, you could actually you can set yourself on fire, right? So there's no point in me just saying, oh, just swap that lead round. You've got to have checked all the other stuff. Um, and lots of people just want, no, just tell me, you know, the classic one, you know, the question on YouTube is, you know, uh, my motor won't turn. What is problem? Exclamation mark, exclamation mark, exclamation mark, exclamation mark. And you kind of go, what am I, what, where do I start? You know, you yeah. kind of go, so, you know, what's the model? What's the, is it a flight controller? You know, um, have you made something before? Did it used to work? What troubleshooting have you done? And they're kind of going, no, it, you know, to, is simple question what you know what is answer because usually it doesn't include punctuation as well i don't know whether that has anything to do with it but you kind of go mate i can't it's like somebody driving a car that's making a weird uh clanking noise at 42 miles an hour in second mm -hmm. gear into a thing and just going makes clanking noise fix car and the <laughs> and, and the and the mechanic going so uh, can I talk to you a little about no simple planking 42 miles an hour you fix it's kind of like well mate it could be it could be loads of stuff right but I need yeah. you know, we need to do the difference is for the mechanic is that they can road test it and go okay I need to know I know <laughs> I get in the car drive to 42 miles an hour and I will like go wonder where I'm hearing this from and also they will make tools to find out uh, BMW had an amazing thing where they've got a system where they put remote mics in different parts of the car. Yeah. And because they know the distance of what car it is, it will pinpoint where the noise is coming from. So you can go in there and be like, I've got a weird squeak noise. <clears throat> and it turns out it's the cover where the um, the sunroof uh, wiggles up yep. above the oh. driver and rubs against the window. Or, or, or a packet of, a packet of Mentos has fallen behind the the spare wheel in the in the, in the boot yeah. right it could be something like that uh, yeah. joking aside I've, I've seen that but anyway but what you're talking about is you're talking about troubleshooting you're talking yeah. about the process where you try and reproduce the problem and you take you you split the car down into pieces. so is it coming from the suspension you now where's it coming from what ele what parts of the car yeah. are in that particular all, all that stuff right you know and you and I did that troubleshooting video as yeah. part of the um the mini air show yeah, um you know we we that. talked about that and and again thank you troubleshooting is is an yeah. art form and i've tried to do videos on it but every single instance is slightly different um you know you you you've built thousands of quadcopters in your time i've built probably you know hundreds and hundreds and the thing is there are common gotchas that you come into but you still come across situations where you do something and you look across and you go oh that hasn't worked and 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 every you think you've done everything right and there's one little nubbin you know little um solder pad that you should have done for the bec voltage to the servos or whatever it is um you know every time you build you learn one and um you know this is something that my my wife's a primary school teacher and we were talking about this the other day and i was talking to her because she was saying that you know a lot of kids in school um because of the relentless pace that they have to run at now a lot of the kids get really uh, worked up about getting things wrong and looking stupid in class i mean when we were kids right you know you you, you didn't want to look at idiot in class right so if you didn't know the answer you weren't going to put your hand up but you know with all the testing and everything that goes on and the, the kid the, some of these kids are getting lots of anxiety about um trying something new because they're really worried about failure but in in my experience something not going right in a build will teach you more about that system through the troubleshooting you have to do than a hundred bills that go absolutely flawless first time out yeah I, I love it when something goes wrong in a build. I know it sounds really weird to say that. Massive. But, uh, but, but no, because the thing is, right, if, I, if it happens to me, there's going to be hundreds of other guys and girls out there building one, and it could potentially happen to them. And I can say, don't do this because I did this. Or, you know, it shows this in the manual, but it's the wrong way around. That's worth its weight in gold. That's kind of, you know, that, that that's the whole point of the video. It's really boring when you get to the end and you just flip the switch and it just goes, Ta -da! and it just mm -hmm. all works because it's like, great that all the people out there um you know who try it and then it doesn't work will just think oh well where do i start because you've got the things like you know reviewers curse or reviewers blessing actually you know mm. we are lucky as reviewers uh, vendors, stuff. 
yeah, v vendors will hand, will kind of hand pack stuff and make sure it's absolutely pucker, all soldering sorted, and send it to us. We'll do the review, and it will be absolutely busting. It will be amazing. And then people go and order it after watching the review, and they'll get the one that was made on a Friday afternoon by the guy who you know who uh, had conjunctivitis in both eyes and lost his glasses. And and it it's horrid. It bursts into flames yeah. after two flights. Um, but similarly, it's the other way around. Occasionally, you get something in, and it's just this is awful. And, um, you know, like Curry and I, uh, Curry Kitten did a review of a little quad the other, the other week and he hated the camera. Um, but my camera wasn't bad. And it's probably because we, we're looking at cameras from two slightly different batches and they probably, after they sent his batch out, got so many complaints about how crap the camera was, they kind of just swapped it out. And they don't say to people, we've replaced the camera. They just <clears throat> kind of do it on the QT. <clears throat> and if you happen to order one that's a reseller that's the old camera, Tough poo, really. Um, so yeah, I, it, I remember it, it, that with the black box from Eishing. They had a really fast processor, and then they swapped it out for a slower, cheaper one, and didn't tell anyone. <laughs> and it's like, thank you, Eishing. Thank, thank you so much. Yeah, it's 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 all it's all good fun. Now you yeah. wanted to talk a little bit. Cause I'm conscious we've nearly been going for an hour already. You wanted to talk a little bit about DJI, didn't you? uh yes your thoughts on uh, well yeah i uh, go on you cover it go on well no do, do you want to just kind of set me up no no i <laughs> <laughs> i don't i i i'm right, let me just wet my whistle. yeah well you and i have talked um because for those of you watching jack and i are actually friends you know we've learned for a long time now um so we do chat um, and I do keep saying to Jack, we should record our phone calls because they're, they're about an hour long and they're they're practically a, a show in their own right. Cause we, yeah. Hang, yeah. Hang on, we'll make it more phone call. Yeah, from that slag, Andy RC. <laughs> 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 that's, that's for you, buddy. <laughs> <That's>, uh, <laughs> we bye. love you, Andy. Come back soon. <laughs> yeah. So... Um, so, so we were we were talking about this and the whole DJI versus analog debate, and um, and you were kind of saying to me, what do you think about it? Because those watching the channel will know that the nano drive that I've just built, see, doing it again, trying to do it by looking at the screen, doesn't work. Um, the nano drive that I've just built has analog in it. Not only does it have analog in it, it actually has two cameras. There's one that mm -hmm. look, points down as well. So. Um, you know, lots of people were going, all oh, right, why have you done that? Well, I put DGI in the mini drag. Um, and I, I've got both systems and fly both. Uh, the DGI system is technically absolutely fantastic. Um, it does spoil you once you have flown with the HD DGI system and you go back to analog because me and my friend chase each other, uh, in the sky not not it's not weird like that we we kind of chase each other's planes um oh, so we we, we we play for yeah we play follow the leader and and things <laughs> like that uh, it's like airwolf let's play follow the leader um so we do that a lot and and doing it the problem is is that i cannot do that with the dji hd system because my mate doesn't have the dji hd system so if we wanted to set it up i'd have to spend uh 20 minutes fagging about setting up all of it because he, he's not into all the on-screen display. I've just been teaching him to fly FPV. So it's taken me two years now, and he's now an accomplished FPV fixed-wing pilot. Uh, that's been a fantastic experience, by the way. So uh, it, it's given him a whole other aspect to the hobby. Um, and now I'm trying to teach him to, to like I say, the follow the leader because until now he's not had to worry about other aircraft in the air, and now he's having to compensate for another vehicle and manage his throttle and uh, and position in this in 3d space and, and uh don't don't forget the old uh prop wash as well to Absol tony absolutely. tony taught me follow the leader by the way it isn't it a great way to learn to fly because it actually stops you thinking focus. about what yeah it the focus is on is on trying to get close up to the guy in front um so that's what i'm doing with him anyway long story short so the the analog stuff uh, I put in, pla in planes like this because I want to fly with other people. 
uh, lots of other people who don't have the DGI system. Now, I know there is a way that you can set it up so the DGI system and analog systems are kind of out of each other's way. Um, but I don't want to. I don't want to risk it. I, you know, I just put this on race channel or fat chart channel six or whatever it is. His is on fat chart channel one. It's beautiful. We can fly. You know, um, separation. We we've got great separation. Uh, I can. You know, if, if I'm flying, he can just put his goggles because he can do that with a little clicker. Uh, he's got his fat sharks, um, you know, channel six, and he can watch if we're doing it like the maiden for this. You know, once we'd done that and I was flying around, then he um, he kind of had a look at the, in his goggles. DJI system, what he has to do is kind of wait for me to get home, download the video footage from the SD card, <laughs> edit it and, and send it to him and he can watch it. And it's and it's kind of you know we joked about this. It's the difference between you know having sex on your own and having sex with other people. Uh, one's much more fun, and for me that's the that's the difference. The the, the DJI system is uh, a technical tour de force. Not a big fan of the closed nature of DJI myself. I don't like the way it doesn't support third party devices. I don't like the way it's been very lax about picking up support for different telemetry kinds. I think the on-screen display is crap considering uh, everything it's done. But when you look at that HD image and you're flying at 80 miles an hour, you know, 20 foot over the top of trees in a mini track with the throttle wide open or a nano, uh, that it, you know what I mean? You, you kind of don't care about that. Um, it's forgivable. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of forgivable, right? You kind of okay. Yeah, I'll I'll kind of live with those shortcomings. Um, but but the other issue I've got is that for for me, you know, um, I've just had another. Uh, offer of a, a quad for review and it's a d it's designed for the dji hd system and the the guy sending me the quad said oh you know have you got a spare air unit you can put in it have i got a spare 170 pound air unit lying about to just put it in mm, fully enough no i've not because when i buy them i buy them because i need them to put them in a model um mm. And, and that and that again is the is the issue. If you only got one or two models, DJI is amazing, right? Because you know if you it's one hundred and seventy quid for the proper air units, a little bit cheaper if you go for the air light. Um, but I've got 30, 40 models, um, and you know, I, am I going to replace each of those with an air unit? One, it won't fit in some. So I think for me, it's horses for courses. There are situations where the models, like when I was, um, I was there's a review coming out tomorrow of a DJI um, HD quad by, uh, let me get this right, GEPRC. Is that what they're called? Mm. Uh, they're Mark, right to me. GEPRC, Mark IV. Uh, they've done a HD one. And I went out in the middle of the fields in Cheshire, uh, and it, the, the, the sun was out. It was by a lake, and I flew around, and it was immense. It's the kind of thing that I couldn't have done with analog I'd, I'd have, I could have downloaded the footage because I tend to use the run cam hybrids a lot. You know, the one with the two lenses. Yeah. Um, so I've got HD footage. Um, but it was just immense. But if I'm flying with other people, then for me, you know, I, I prefer analog because that's kind of what other pilots have got. And also, if, the, if, if you're flying and someone else isn't, but they've got the goggles around the neck, they can kind of say, what, what channel are you on, mate? And you can shout and they'll dial the channel in and they can kind of come along for a ride along it's kind of those mm. kind of things that would be great i wish the dgi system would have a hdmi out so you could plug it into an auxiliary set of goggles so you other people could watch i think it's the or biggest a cheap screen or a cheap screen yeah don't make me buy a smart controller so that people can see it on a flipping screen give me a cheap screen that other people can watch it on and it's things like that 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 bug me but you know if, if you only have one or two models um, you know the cost of entry is kind of similar to high-end analog now if you only have one mm. or two models the problem is is that it doesn't scale because every model you get is another 150 170 quid for the air unit and and i would normally spend 20 30 quid on a camera uh 20 30 quid on a vtx and 10 quid on an antenna you know and and, and you kind of you tend to reuse those anyway you know mm. we've all got that bag of bits um in the back so no, i i i I'm a fan of the DJI uh, HD stuff. I love it. I think it's really good. But I am not one of those people who will say, analog is dead. Digital is the mm. future. If you're on analog, you're a Luddite. Because you know what? I don't think it's the answer. And plus, you know, 
talking to the boys at Fat Shark and a couple of other people, you know, there will be other options. And some of those other options will play nicer with analog systems, which is music to my ears. Because if I could still fly and chase my mate around and he's on an analog system and I'm on a shark bite system, but I'm getting a HD, you know, much improved image, that gives me the best of both worlds. So, yeah. You know, I think it's a very long way of saying I love it, but it's horses for courses. For me, it hasn't replaced analog. It's as well as. Have you, have you suffered much of the whole like freezy lockout stuff where it freezes on an image and you can't see what's going on? Touch wood, not yet. Um, I have had breakup. already touching wood. <laughs> we, we, yeah, but <laughs> <laughs> like. <laughs> Phew. Um, no, no, but but I have had situations where on the edge of the screen, uh, it's become very pixelated and we started to lose bitrate stuff. Um, uh, but to, to be honest, I tend to fly in big open areas. Um, in so, so I don't tend to do the stuff where I'm obscuring the antennas as, as much as well. So uh, you, if you don't push the system in terms of your range, and also I use the... What are they called? The Menis RC Digi Packs or whatever they are. You know the the uh, the, the made like left hand polarized thingies for the bottom. That seems patches. to really help. That's it. Thank you. Yeah, I forgot what patches were called for a minute. Then um, <laughs> those are those are really good, and they seem to help keep the keep the signal in in situations where you might get a bit of breakup. But for me, you know, I'm not shooting down chimneys or going through abandoned buildings. You know, I'm flying at th uh, you know a couple of hundred feet over wooded forest or you know shoot, uh, going down lanes, things like that. Should have watched my interview. Sorry, Winter Blue. Did we cover something from his as well? Uh, I was on his channel uh, yeah. with J with James. Oh my gosh, probably five six weeks ago. Uh, we had to again. James is an awesome lad. If you it, it, check out his channel, the Winter Blue channel, um, and yeah, he he was. I think that was talking about where the name came from. Um, and he was asking about the pill and things like that as well, because mm. it is one that why why painless three sixty for an RC channel? It it doesn't make any sense. But I can't change it now. It's one of the top three search terms that people use to find my content. So if I changed it to something else, everyone would be going, "Where's that painless guy gone?" Mm. Or as or as it's known in in some of the shows, you know. Remember when we used to go to shows, you know, before the world exploded, and we used to actually meet up in person. Um, I know. I've, yeah. I've been introduced as you remember the, the the guy you watch on YouTube, the pill guy. Oh wow! Yeah. I've been introduced as that before today. Yeah, and 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 it's great watching the other person go. Oh yeah, the pill guy. Yeah, watch your stuff. Brilliant. Sounds like oh, I'm good. <laughs> yeah. I know. Don't. I'm I'm growing catnip. And I have weird cats outside my window now. Just <laughs> very weird. So I feel like a little drug pusher. Hi, all. Started, we're covering questions in the last few minutes. All right. Okay. Started with a KK2, but don't hear much about this for FC. What are your memories of it? Uh, very Scream. fond ones. Very yeah. fond ones. It was the first real flight controller I ever had. And it was... Uh, actually, it was it was Chris at Armatan that made it for me, uh, and he put it in one of his uh, Armatan. Take a one or two? No, two, because it had the screen. Because okay. I th I thought the fact it had the screen on was just like amazing, um, and I got it. And it and because uh, I come from helicopters, so come from RC helicopters to quads. A lot of people were like, "Oh, still struggling to fly." For me as a heli pilot, it was like, "Oh my god, this is easy. It doesn't try and destroy itself as soon as I throttle up." Um, and I loved it. I thought it was great. I just, um, I, I love the simplicity of it as well. You know, going back to what we're talking about about you know, twenty one million switches on the cockpit of the Boeing seven three seven. Can I? Can you just tell me the four controls I need to fly? Um, that that literally had the four controls you needed to fly. There was a P and I mm. and a D. The hardest thing to set up, if I remember right, was the bloody level. You had to go in and set the level separately. It had an auto level feature. Mm. Um, but no, so. I, I loved it. I've still got one. Uh, I wouldn't get rid of it. It is um, in, still in that Armatan quad that looks like an, it, like an industrial drone. It was actually made of CNC aluminium that would, had been blacked. Um, God, them with the dead. And it's always. And that's it. Yeah, and, and it just 
it was it was great but but for me that was my first taste of flying a multi-rotor and it just blew my socks off because i could actually go out and fly it and bring it home and it was still in one piece which i very rarely got to do flying rc helicopters there was always something that would let go or a little blade strike and you and 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 this thing even when you landed and it flopped over if it broke a prop you just took the prop off and put a new prop on did the prop nut and it was ready to go again it's like mm -hmm. no three hour rebuilding the head this is this do, is awesome. do, you, do you remember do you remember your you know your first full battery spent do you remember there was a time where you couldn't finish a battery i i do i actually uh, it wasn't on a full size quad it was Something called the Heli Guy Viper, which was actually a rebranded Hubson that used to sit on your, uh, that would literally sit on the palm of your hand. Um, it was like 70 quid, came with a little controller. Gee, 70? What? Yeah. <laughs> it was, uh, it might not have been that much actually. Never that heard of it. Anyway, anyway it, it, yeah, was, yeah. It, it, it was, in the picture, it looked massive, right? Because there wasn't any frame of reference. So it looked like no, it scary, flies, yeah. the size of a Labrador dog. Anyway, so when it arrived, it was on my palm of my hand. Anyway, my wife bought it for me for Christmas because oh. I was trying to fly this Armatan thing. Um, but the thing I was struggling with is with a helicopter, I always had a tail stick out the back. So I always which, knew which way it was pointing. With a quadcopter, I lost orientation all the time because there was no front. So I even put this thing like, um, LED different lights props. on it, different. Pro you know, it was just a whole different world. Mm. So she bought it for me for Christmas, and over the next three months, the poor lady could not watch uh, anything on TV without this little thing going. As I'm there in the lounge, going through battery after battery after battery, doing nose in, side in, hovering, uh, you know, spinning it around and stopping it randomly. You know, this is back when line of sight flying was, you know, before FPV was a thing. Um, you know, uh, just to get I was control like, oh, of it. in my mum's garden. And then once I was able to do that and finish a, and finish battery after battery after battery, and it took me about three months. It took me ages for it to click. And once it clicked, when uh, the weather started to improve, went out with my armor tank quad and did a one battery, no problem, flying it, you know, turning around, flying it around. Because, of course, I don't know why I was turning Whoa, it around. Oh, calm down, Sharpo. Uh, <laughs> it, was, it, it was just like, oh, right, okay, I get it. But, but, it, but it, it took me, and this is, I think, what a lot of people don't get from watching YouTube videos. You know, you watch a YouTube pilot who's, you know, shooting down. You know, trapeze lot are a nightmare for this. They do amazing videos, and they're, they're screaming down their side of a mountain. And what they don't realize is that guy's been flying for like seven years or, mm. or every day for two years, and they can do that. Um, you know, and it, it can be frustrating for some to come into the hobby, get their quad, and, and day one, it doesn't work like that. You know, they, there's, a, there's a huge learning curve to get up. Well, uh, I've got I've got some usual questions that I I ask. Your oldest piece of uh, equipment that's still going and you still use. That is a really tough question. Probably the Tyrannus radio from twenty fifteen. Wow. Uh, everything else, I'm thinking the the, the Spectrum DX seven got replaced with the Tyrannus. I don't don't use that anymore, but I've still got it. Um, yeah, it's going to be the Tronis. Uh, when that dies, I'm going to be a very sad bunny because that's been a loyal companion for many, 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 many years. I have lots and lots of donors, if you need any. And <laughs> good to know. I might hit. I might hit you up for some of that. I've got a whole set of brand new switches as well. They're they're pretty much. I might just send them to you anyway. You know what, brother? Yeah, please. Please, because um, um, they're they're different in the two thousand and uh, two thousand and seventeen nine. edition. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. A really good question. From And yeah. An Andrew was saying expected a multimeter or soldering iron. You know, wait, mate, it would have been apart from the fact that my trusty. Hang on, I'm going to turn the whole screen around now. Dun, 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 dun. Me and Andy RC often talk about what does the wife look like? The, the the industrial, her name begins with L, and we're always like, we've never seen her. <laughs> he's, never, he's never, he's been round. She's never I know. He avoids him. 
Uh, yeah. So, oh god, I'm doing that thing again. So that is my Weller soldering iron uh, on the build table oh, yeah. behind me, and oh, my, my Weller, my Weller soldering. The first one uh, I got when I was um, uh, an apprentice, uh, doing all of that stuff and um, becoming a electronics, uh, electrical electronic design engineer was what I trained at and was certified as. Um, and uh, the Weller soldering, we kind of all got a Weller soldering station. You know, it was kind of yours and you kind of kept And when we left, they just kind of went, oh, you can have it. So so that had gone through probably a dozen tips. And, I'm, and I got that when I was six, 17 or 18. So, um, and I'm what, 50 now. So uh, it was 30 odd years old. And it let go about this time last year. I was in the middle of a job. I flicked the switch. And then, you know, like you do, you just, you just, and you, you on the sponge expecting the as, as the tip's hot and it and then you do that thing where you kind of bring it under your nose and you're like hang on a minute oh that oh it's cold hang on so i'm like okay but the light was on so then i, I, I took the power supply apart did the other bits and pieces then started taking the right wand on. apart uh and it, it because they the work on the curie uh the curie point so as it hits at certain temperature the magnetism uh, changes and it kind of turns on and, and it's the tip the, the changeable to anyway died so i had to so that that would have been my oldest thing um andrew and the multimeter uh i that's that one's only about three years old i wanted one the the continuity function had stopped beeping and i use that so often i just i, I was really annoyed that it gave up um so, uh, so yeah, unfortunately, it is the Tyrannus, only because I've replaced a lot. Oh, see, I'm doing that thing again. I'm trying to do it. In the triggers, the triggers brush. Yeah, yeah, it, it is triggers brush. Yeah, it's had 12 handles and uh, 30 heads. It's the same brush. I've had it for 30 years. Um, but no, no, it, but, but no, it's the Tyr it's the Tyrannus. I love my Tyrannus. I'm, I'm, the the uh, Radio Master is behind me. It's there. God, um, it's been it's cloned all of the models onto it from a Tyrannus. So the day the Tyrannus does bite the big one, if I can't resurrect it with the switches you're kind of donating, then I'm uh, we'll we'll be going over to that bad boy. Uh, remember, keep your models backed up, people. Yeah, do it do it regularly. You'll be surprised how often you need to refer to those. Um, and and also, if you pass a model on to someone else, and they or they inherit or buy it from you, uh, be a hero and uh, email them the OpenTX setup file. It'll just save them a lot of messing about. Yeah, no worries. Right, I think we'll call it there. Thank you, Painless360, for coming on, having a chat with me. My pleasure, mate. Always a pleasure to have a chat. I hope you uh, hope you feel better soon. And uh, yeah. yeah, I'll uh, I'll probably speak to you at some point next week uh, uh, yeah. off the air. Oh, I know. Yeah, a bit of pain there. My eyes were watering for a bit. It was horrible. Um, but yeah, thank you so much. If you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe. Help me beat Tony uh, to a thousand. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going uh, to share it on my my things. That pop pop me the yeah. oral that you want, and I'll stick it on the community tab. But no, yeah, thank you. No for and, and and Jack, thank you for doing this style of video where you're talking to people and finding out stuff. I, I, I'm personally really enjoying them, so I'll be I'll be one that keeps um, uh, yeah. dialing in and just and just having a look because every time I listen, I learn something, which is awesome. Yeah, it's really I've I've really enjoyed it, and basically covering the the friends we've made along the way. So. Hopefully we'll we'll get there. All right, thank you and uh, have a good day. Thanks everybody. Thanks, Goodbye.